when you start a new reverse engineering project, I can recommend you to search for a function that is processing data or that holds data. For example, in a messenger, that would be the object that is holding a message. And then from there on, you could start searching for how messages that are incoming are processed and received, how they are sent, how they are stored. So in this first video, I'm going to cover how to find a message in the Signal Messenger. It's a bit like finding a needle in a haystack because the thing itself is called a messenger. So you are also looking for something similarly named and Objective C, the language it's written in, is also sending messages from object to object. And a lot of things would match if you just grab for message. So let's take a look how to solve this. Within Signal, we are looking for something that is a message. So probably the object is called message, but often that's prefixed with something like the framework short name. And we also don't know which methods are called on the message. When I do this, Frida is generating a lot of handlers and loading them into our target. This takes a moment and now we can just see a lot of things that started with copy with zone, which is not too interesting. So what you can do is you can just exclude something like, for example, here you can say, I want to exclude everything that starts with copy in the method name. This might be too much. We might exclude something that we want to see, but it's reducing all the noise here. And once again, it's just loading everything into the process. Here we are. And now I sent a message. And you can see a lot of things going on. I just interrupt this here once again. And well, we can see there is this TS outgoing message. If we go back a bit more, there might be even different things. All right. So here we see this TS outgoing message is inited with the GRDB ID. So that's the database where messages are stored. And there is even more going on. And here we have something really interesting because we can see there's a TS message and the TS message object also has attachments, a body, it expires. So this looks like the getter of a message. So here we are receiving information from a message or like, yeah, asking the program what is stored there. And down here, a message is generated or inited. And we could hook into both things. So the thing that I plan to do now is looking into the message body. So I just take my Frida trace statement, but I just trace the body call. And I expect that there is everything that is stored in a message. Here we are. I think I have to send something again. That looks good. A lot of calls on the body. So you see there's maybe not just one message going on, but multiple things. And in between here, you can see some thread switches, but that's all fine. Now we can also, if I just do this briefly, see that it says it loaded a handler, which is here. And I can just open this one. And now I can edit this. Frida will not regenerate the same file if I make modifications. So that's very, very nice. I can just change the script from Frida trace and run Frida trace again. Since it's a, a getter, I can just say, I don't want to lock the on enter, but I'm interested in the on leave. So when a value of the body of the message is returned, I can say, uh, lock the return value. In some cases, this would already be it. Uh, but let's take a look. So you can see this is not really a message. But what we can see here, 
are pointers. So this might be a pointer to data. And in Frida, I can now say uh, dot read byte array to just read bytes in memory at the pointer. Maybe something like 40 bytes would do this, so hex 40. And I can also say I want to display this as a hex dump. Let's just run this again. This looks pretty good and you can see there's different messages in here, but also you can see that the message strings, they are not at the beginning of this byte array, but they are a bit later. And the reason for this is that this is an objective C object probably, or maybe an NS string or something like this. And if it's the case and I'm lucky, I can just cast this properly. So what I can also do instead of logging the hex dump here is I just say, um, log me the object to C object here. And now the interesting thing about this is when I log the Objective-C object here, if this is really a string, it will be displayed correctly. Let's try this again. Yeah, this looks pretty good. You can see it's used by multiple threads, so we have different colors and it appears again and again. But here we see all the messages, including emoji and everything printed with our hook.